Hey, it's Yajin here with Gimme CrossFit in San Dimas, California, and today we're gonna to talk about sleep and why sleep is important when it comes to weight loss. And I just wanna start this out and talk about what the importance of sleep in general is. Why do we sleep? And if you're interested on this topic of sleep, a really great book is actually named Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. I would look into it if you're interested at all in the reason of why we sleep. But the reason why we sleep is because it's our body's way of resting and recovering. And a lot of things um, that happen during our sleep is actually our body's ability to learn, to memorize topics, to kind of uh, rid itself of traumatic things that might have happened throughout the day, to repair itself, boost our immunity. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But just as there's a long list of positive benefits that we can see from getting enough sleep on a regular basis, the list of health um, downsides that we can face if we do deprive our bodies of sleep is huge. And if you're more interested in that, I'm not going to dive into the health portion of that. You can look more into the book Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. So now when it comes to weight loss, what does sleep have anything to do with weight loss? Now when we're not getting enough sleep or otherwise we're depriving our body of the sleep that it properly needs we've seen through studies that we tend to sh shift our diet towards foods that are probably not the most beneficial to us a lot of junk food will be consumed and in fact on average the person who doesn't get enough sleep is going to consume about 300 more calories on a regular basis than the one who is properly rested throughout the night not only that, if you're tired and groggy throughout the day, you might show up to work feeling a little more stressed out, tired, not as productive. When someone talks to you, you you might be a little more annoyed um, compared to the days where you got a proper night of rest. All those little things can build up throughout the day and now you get off of work and you're trying to decide, should I show up to the gym today? Do I still wanna get my workout in? If you're feeling that bad, you know, working out is probably not going to be at the top of your mind or schedule in that situation. Now, on top of that, not only are you less likely to show up to the gym and your diet's gonna be completely out of sync, your body's ability to burn body fat is significantly reduced on days where you're not getting enough rest. And to make things even worse, the weight loss that you do experience on days where you're a little more sleep deprived is actually going to consist of a lot of lean muscle tissue that you work hard to build up in the gym. So not only is it harder for your body to burn that fat, but you're also losing a lot of lean muscle tissue by depriving yourself of sleep on a regular basis. So now that we've pointed out a couple of the downsides um, about how sleep affects weight loss, how much sleep do you really need? So it's estimated that most people need somewhere between seven and a half to nine hours of sleep per night, depending on an individual to individual basis. Now, if you're getting less than that and you are telling yourself, you know, I feel pretty good, I'm able to get by on a regular basis, know that our bodies are able to adapt, not in a good way, when we start to sleep deprive, deprive ourselves of sleep over longer periods of time. And basically our energy threshold drops to a point that averages with the amount of energy that we have due to lack of sleep. So basically the less you sleep, the less overall energy you're able to have on a regular basis. And if you really think that you're able to get by on just a couple hours per night, the actual statistic of how many people are able to get by with less than either seven and a half or eight hours per night is about a fraction of 1% of the population. So you might wanna think again to see if that really happens to be you. Now, now that we kind of pointed out how much sleep you need and the downsides of sleep when it comes, or downsides on weight loss when it comes to not getting enough rest, let's talk about how you can sleep better at night. And you know, there's a handful of things that you can do but we're gonna kinda of cover the ones that I find are gonna be a lot more important. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is devices. Dr. Matthew Walker actually covered this in his book that we've seen studies on the effect of blue light on melatonin release 
building up to the time where we're about to sleep and exposure to blue light actually having a um, delaying the effect or delaying the time of when melatonin starts to release into our system making it harder for us to fall asleep I was actually following him on a podcast recently and he changed his perspective on devices and said it might not be so much the blue light that is causing people to have a harder time falling asleep but rather than all the mental stimulus that we might experience by going on Instagram, by going on Facebook, all these social media platforms, all the stimulus driving into our brains at a time late at night. And if you've ever kind of had your phone going, whether you're playing a game on social media, scrolling through your feed, whatever it is, you get in bed at 11 and all of a sudden you look at the time and it's like 3 a.m. in the morning and it's like, where's the time gone? That's probably something that you want to kind of get rid of when you're getting ready for sleep. Maybe place your device in another room, turn it on airplane mode, turn it off completely, set it on a stand like far away, but you probably don't want to be carrying that to sleep, especially if you know you have a hard time falling asleep because you can't get yourself off of the phone. Now the second tip that I would recommend is setting an alarm. And now we all set an alarm for when we should be waking up in the morning, but how often have we thought about setting an alarm? to notify us about what time we should be going to bed, going to sleep at night, right? Because it's very important that we get enough sleep. So why shouldn't, why do we set up an alarm for when we wake up, but not for the time we should actually go to bed? So typically I'll set an alarm, whether it's 30 minutes ahead or an hour ahead. So I know that when that alarm goes off, it's probably time to put away the electronics, start getting ready for bed, go through the processes that you need to go through, whatever that is. And that's something that's gonna actually help you out with this next point, is paying attention to when you um, last eat and drink before you head off to bed. I actually have a separate timer for this as well. Um, just as a rule of thumb, you should cut off any large meals or food consumption about three hours prior to when you're going to bed and drinks about two hours prior to that. So usually two hours prior to when I decide that I'm going to sleep, I'll actually have an alarm go off to let me know that this is the latest time where I'm able to have any sort of drink or fluid before I head off to bed. And the next point is having to do with alcohol and caffeine. Now when it comes to caffeine, we each uh, process caffeine a little differently. Some people are able to metabolize the caffeine a lot quicker. However, as another rule of thumb, caffeine typically has a half-life within our body of about six hours. That means if you were to drink it now, six hours later, about 50% of that caffeine would still be in your body. Six hours after that, another 50% of that 50%, so 25% of the uh, total would still be in your body there. So you really want to pay attention to um, when's the last or latest time of day that you have caffeine especially if you're one of those people who might not be able to fall asleep or have a hard time sleeping when you have caffeine later throughout the day usually just as a good rule of thumb cut off around noon to 1 p.m. would be a good place to start and we probably already know this but even though alcohol might feel good in the evening and help you fall asleep a little faster. It strongly impacts the way that we're, so it impacts the way that we're able to get into our deeper phases of sleep that our body really needs in order to fully rest and recover. So when it comes to alcohol, you're probably better off just, <laughs> sorry, I was thinking about this joke that, that uh, Dr. Matthew Walker always brings up where instead of drinking later into the evening, we should be at the pub first thing in the morning, which I always think is a great idea. However, that probably doesn't work out with most people's work schedules. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you probably do want to try to cut off your alcohol consumption later on into the evening. If you can move that uh, earlier on into the day, the impacts are less profound on your sleep, but the closer you are drinking towards bedtime, and the more drinks that you're having, the greater the impact there will be on your sleep in a, ne in a negative way. Now finally, exercise. Now exercise is great for your health and well-being. However, exercising too close to bedtime 
can make it difficult for you to fall asleep too. So as a general rule of thumb, three hours prior to bedtime should be about when you get your latest workout in. Some people are able to get that kind of closer. Again, with a lot of these things, try to pay attention to how you feel um, about each of them. So those are a couple of ways on how you can get better sleep throughout the night. And we talked a bit about the downsides of sleep deprivation on weight loss and health and well-being in general. Again, if you're interested in learning more about the topic of sleep, I would really recommend the book, Why We Sleep. You could probably find that just about anywhere. And I'm challenging you, since you watched this video, go ahead, pick one of the things that we listed, whether it's leaving your devices outside of the room, setting a bedtime alarm, cutting out food and drink earlier, food, remember three hours prior, drink two hours prior, lowering your alcohol and caffeine consumption to get better quality of sleep, and exercising, um, not later, earlier on within the day so that you can sleep better throughout the night. So go ahead, do one of those things, drop a comment below or shoot me a message. Let me know which of them you're trying out and I really hope that this uh, video was helpful to you in some way, shape or form. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.